Yeah, you know, your grandpa taught me how to tie this knot when I was about your age. Good, now we're gonna go back through the loop. Pinch off that tag with this finger. Never know when you're gonna get a biggie. Whoa, whoa, don't use your teeth. It's bad for your teeth. But you always use your teeth. Yeah, well, don't tell your mother. For many of us, fishing in some form started around a farm pond or a nearby river. Learning how to snag fences or trees with our back casts, creating and untangling messes, and eventually bringing something to hand. Someday your kids will take to your passions. Great fish, Jack. Thanks, Dad. But all you can really do is show them the path. Take them outside when you can give them the tools, and hope that it lights a lifelong spark. Hi, my name's Jack. And yes, this film is narrated by a kid. And I know what you're thinking. Ah, oh, kid film, yay! Well, hang in there. I think you're really gonna like this story. I live in Bend, Oregon. And I'm a pretty normal 12-year-old boy, except I live in a fly fisherman's house, which can be a little weird. Take this, for example. This is a typical fly fishing party. Lots of flannel and beards, and a lot of trucks with fishing stickers in the driveway. Now, at these fishing parties, I'm always the youngest person in the room, except for my buddy, Judd. Judd really doesn't say much. He's kind of like Silent Bob but I don't really know who that is because my parents told me that I can't watch that movie yet. And we've been getting it done ever since we were tiny. I know this is gonna sound really Canadian. I really only care about two things, hockey and fishing. I even open up my own fly tying business and business is good. Hey, yeah, this is Jack. Going to BC? Ah, uh, that must be nice, George. 50 blue pick your pockets. What, when? Thursday, okay. Yeah, I think I can make that work. See ya, bye. And now that we're finally old enough, we can get off the farm ponds and hit the big river. All of my friends think that fishing is sitting around and super boring, which is just fine. That means more room for us to swing. Over the years, me and Judd have dedicated ourselves to the pursuit of steelhead. I watch these steelhead movies and hear people complain that it's all casting and no catching. What's the problem with casting? Spay casting is sick. You bomb a cast, throw them in, let it marinate, then let her swing. Then you take a big step and repeat. It's harder than the shoot move, but simpler than the floss. It's hard raising little steelhead anglers because catching fish isn't something you can count on. 
So you gotta keep it light, you gotta keep them moving, you gotta keep them fed, you gotta have lots of snacks, you gotta make it about fun. The goal is to get them out of the house, unplug them from technology, and get them outside. Come on boys, time to go steelhead fishing. Give me those phones. It is possible to go fly fishing without putting it on Instagram. Out you go. Historically, between 16 and 20 million salmon and steelhead enter and ran into the rivers all over the region. But finding fish this year has been brutal. Less than 100,000 summer steelies came home over the Bonneville Dam, and only a fraction of those made it to the Deschutes, our home river. On top of that, our river got torched. hard to watch happen to the place that I love. The fire left its mark on the landscape. Dad says it will come back with time. But still, it's a gut punch. All right, guys, have fun. Don't come back too soon. Love ya. This year, we're finally old enough to take our first big guys trip. And we figured after the fire, it's a good time to get out on the open road and see some new country. We told our dads we wanted to go west. Cue that road trip montage. I'm talking dry flies, wild trout, and spring creeks. A real trout trip. Then they told us we were actually headed east from Morgan, but whatever. Look. It is so hard to describe the excitement of seeing your first western trout river because we've been reading about this fishery with our parents for years. It's home to the largest native cutthroat fishery outside Yellowstone National Park. It's one of the top dry fly fisheries in the world, a big watershed called the South Fork of the Snake River. And no amount of reading could prepare us for what we're about to see. From now on, when I dream of dry fly fishing, it's gonna look just like this. the fishing gods were really, really good to us. We were feeling super spoiled and really lucky to have this opportunity. Trout fishing is the opposite of steelheading. Turns out you get a ton of shots, you actually see fish eating, and tons of action. So epic. And without pressure to find fish, it's super chill and relaxing. Dad's always saying fishing trips are not real about the catching. And I guess I'm starting to see that now. It's about hanging out with good folks, and it turns out fly fishermen are downright good people.
I'm from a really beautiful place, and I love my home. But this place is really beautiful, too. The sky just feels larger, and there's just this untouched wild. in a drift boat. Eat your food. Eat your food, Dana. Got him! Drift, 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 drift. Give him the business, Jack. Give him the business. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bob. Drift, 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 drift. Let him have it, Jack. Let him have it. Okay, now chill out a little bit. <laughs> keep stripping, keep stripping. Oh, he's a good fish. Put him in my scoop, amigo. I guess this is why people fall in love with the West. We saved our final day for the Spring Creeks. Slow, crystal clear water, long leaders, tiny flies, perfect casting, ninja stuff. Hiya! Holy. Do you see that? That's a big one. Okay. Oh my god. So next cast, let's go a little bit left and get that guy on the left, okay? You got him. We're gonna stay with it. Good knee throw with no salt cast. Keep him nice and wet down there. So we have our seaweed cutthroat, you know, down at the coast. This is an inland cutthroat. So they're native to this part of the country. It's just beautiful. Look at the spot pattern that fades. Really nice. What do you think? Oh man, that's amazing. All the food's coming down off of that point. It's sliding right down in the back button. Okay. So we gotta, we gotta put it above him and float it down to him. Come on down here and check them out. Oh, what a gorgeous fish, Jack. Nice and wet. That's why we let them go. Let them get bigger, mm -hmm. have more babies, and come back and get them next year. Okay. I'm the luckiest kid in the world. And just then, when it couldn't get any better, I spotted a Slurposaurus Rex working a cut bank just upstream. I knew who this fish belongs to. Ready? Go. A little to your right, Dad. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Leave it, leave it. No strip, no strip. Yeah. There you go. Got him. Okay, come on. Bring it, bring it. Little, little closer. Got him, got him, got him. Ha <laughs> ha, good. Easy, buddy. Easy. You want to get the fly out of his mouth? Yeah, I got it. It was a great fish. My old man may be a steelheader, but I gotta hand it to him. I actually might get used to this guiding deal. What a sick job that would be. You get paid to fish? Are you kidding me? That's crushing life. Anyway. Judd and I are already planning next year's trip. By our calculations, we only need to tie and sell 8,437 flies, and we just might be able to make it to the Seychelles. Oh, yeah! Drop that beat. <laughs> 